is the, 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 the main uh, interest is that you develop the context of where you make the design. I'm a product designer because I think I start really close to the person. So I don't, as, a, as a, an urban architect, I'm not overviewing reality and trying to organize it. I start with how a person thinks, how he feels, how he walks. And then through that, I can go and scale up things. And that's why I believe I'm a product designer that also deals with questions within architecture, within uh, ag uh, agriculture, within all these bigger questions too, but at the end always solving it by making products. I think that, uh, and that's of course the important part of education is like to feel like where your interest is and, and, what you, and, and develop your own culture. And through this culture, you ask questions to your topics. So, so in that sense, everything I did like in school that I did for Drogue is all within the same culture of thinking that we now use on the designs. And I wouldn't say that I feel like being inspired by, but it has to do a little, like being inspired by is just, it doesn't mean anything. Like being inspired, you don't have to express at all like where the qualities is or what. It's just like, yeah, being inspired, like it's sort of like uh, taking oxygen to, 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 to breathe, but it doesn't say anything about how you think. But for instance, why we start with these industrial areas is that, and why we did the library is that I find it very strange if you go to industrial areas where there is like all this new knowledge, then the way they build this landscape is that they think, okay, so it's going to be industry. So the car is very important and you need the trucks there. So you get like main roads, really big roads. And at the end, all the business is just like small islands. And the, and the roads are so big that people within the lunch or whatever, they can't meet other people. So at the end, they're all on an island using their own knowledge. And if you would find a way of changing this landscape in that there is also a walking area, which I think should be the library, then this is a place where you will meet other people from like different companies and you will share your knowledge and you can grow together. So for me, it's more about like a critical way of looking at things and being able, like what I like so much on literature is that when you write a book or when a writer writes a book, he thinks about like how his character would live and how he would go. And the nice thing is he has to have, make an image of it because in a book you can't like, when I open the door and go into the next room, I can't know yet, like I can't have decided yet what happens after that. I just have to follow the idea and then write like how that should be. So it's a little bit like what happens if, instead of first mapping everything and understanding everything and then designing it. And for me, this is the way of thinking. Like you just follow a lead your, and it's your intuition. And this intuition has been grown because I've, I'm always thinking like, why are things the way they are? And what do I think about it? And how do people deal with things? So I can only say I could uh, probably, I would hope so. Uh, because at the end, like I'm not a debate designer. So like I'm a product designer, but the way I question things, I hope that the products uh, open up that kind of discussion. But that's also why I believe like most of the things we do are quite ordinary like all these things are within the language you already know it's like not like a kind of a science fiction like complete new uh, shapes or a new kind of thinking because i believe in the language and the debate and as long as everybody starts to understand a little from it then he can he or she can make like his opinion about it if i would like if I would now start speaking Russian to you, then maybe you can understand, but most of you, you won't understand it. So I can tell you everything, but it's like, maybe you can enjoy it for a little while just because of the sound of language, but it gets boring because you don't understand it. And that is what it stops. And I think with design for me, it's the same. As soon as I would make things that are only like sort of aesthetics, but not really understandable or discussable, then like, that's like a dead end for me. It's like, it was maybe just kind of enjoyment. I like that the things are like, you you follow them and it starts to make you thinking and become critical and not critical in the sense that uh, think about what's all bad about it, but more critical in trying to understand like why things happen the way they happen. And if you feel that you would want it to be different, you would change it by understanding and using similar language. Yeah, it's more that like, 
I, I, th I think I'm really interested in the profession. So it's not just about like uh, that I like design, but I really like uh, the profession of being a designer. So to think not just about the object, but also the context of uh, like where the interest is and how to deal with it. So when we started uh, Proof, which is the progressive office, and now within our studio we do the lab and then there's the collection which is done by someone else so he takes care of the collection the, the final product but we are more interested in like to design the context of this progressive office and it comes a little that i feel that uh, th that there's so much attention to leisure and design as uh, like being for the home which i find like it's clear like why it came that way because like it's so much easier to design for the home and like everybody has a home and he wants things there or, like and he wants nicer things there because like work is always about efficiency and like it just has to be clear you go to work but i also believe it's a kind of a language like we make work into an economics and from economics we came to money and from money we came to free time and then before we know we only speak about like the money which was just an exchange and I think the amazing thing about work is that it's the same as school. It's the place where you develop yourself the best, but also where you get the best tools given. Of course, like if you want to do your work well, you get the best computer and it even goes further. Like if you think about like being a pilot, then your boss is going to buy like the most expensive airplane to make you fly with it. And he probably can't even use it because he's not allowed to fly. So, so it goes that far that possession is even better on work because it's a shared thing and it needs to be professional so it's the best cameras the best things so i believe that at work it's a very nice way and it's also like the the, the surrounding there is something that since we only talk about the efficiency it never gets really like properly developed and and i feel like in the 50s for instance if you think about work at that time, work was still like a lifetime situation, which meant that they already understood that like when you work somewhere, social housing was involved, the kids got education through uh, the companies, the, through the social companies. They were concerned with like when you had holidays, they had like special camps where all the people could go to that work there. So they already felt like to do the work well, you had to take care of the whole situation. And that has changed because work became like uh, more uh, in, a, in a direction that it's not only family business, but it's like by shareholders and the profit becomes more important. Everybody's just working shortly there. So it seems that the interest of the work society became a little bit less uh, important. And, and I feel that if you think about that world, there is so much more to be done. And, and I also feel like the whole design culture is going into leisure and the home so it's very busy of designers making nice chairs tables and everything which i think is okay but it's so busy there and there's very little people that start concerning about work in a different way i think there's a lot of designers that work on machines and things like that but it's almost like more engineering but not thinking about like the whole landscape and that's what we try to do with proof like developing so first we did the campus as a topic was the campus is a, it's a topic that is related to um, studying and it's like formal and informal. The formal part is taking your lessons, but the informal part is like doing sports, going to the library, going to the concert hall, like going into the park. So it's still education, but in a different situation. So you will speak differently about it. If work would be similar, then maybe you would stay over at work and you would do sports and it would change the whole landscape then you could really think in the morning like am I going to the forest or am I going to the work and, and to the work because it has like an amazing landscape. So for us that is like a, it's a main topic and if you look at the industry if you look at a car, a car company with all the, all the robots and things like that it's, I think it's an amazing landscape or if you think about like uh, scientific spaces where for instance they like to follow the, uh, the, the, the to make the neutrons really go fast that's like an amazing machine built so so as a designer for me it's quite interesting to think about these topics or the harbor or farmland it's very interesting landscapes and I think as a designer you can get involved in that and start developing this landscape 
and think about that work is not like industry is not just like the machines they make but it's also the whole landscape of the industrial area and now most of the time it's just boxes and i think as a designer you could get involved with that and do like much more amazing uh well topics and that's for us why we now do the library as a topic to think about like okay if you want to develop the landscape of industrial areas then maybe you should begin with the library and and so we start making this idea of like what happens if and then make these sketches so that's also like what we like uh, these drawings that we made about this this landscape it's just that we are product designers but to be able to make decisions like what kind of product you need you develop the whole landscape with it yeah now for instance there's like a couple of uh, now the images are really small i see but like the ear chair or the crate furniture these are two things that really come from this kind of thinking like when i did the ear chairs we had to make a meeting room where people could wait and this was in an existing building mm -hmm. and uh, i was asked to redecorate the space but i also i felt like the walls were still okay, the floor was still okay, like still working, but not in a way that I liked them really. But also I understood like if I as a designer would take out the floor and build a new floor, then within three years there would be another designer that exactly does the same. Like the walls and the floors are not that bad yet, but it's my design, so I have to change it, take out everything, which I found a rather stupid thing because also I really didn't, I didn't really like the building. And as soon as I touch the building, it becomes mine. So then the floor becomes mine. You can say, well, that's an ugly space. But if I just put like carpets on it, then the floor is not mine. It's only the carpet and you feel it. It feels like being dressed in a space. Like when you are dressed to be, you're not going to talk about like the walls and the floors, but to like what I wear. That's me and the rest is space. And with the design, I feel the same. As soon as I touch really the architecture, it becomes mine. And then I have to say sorry for all the things I don't like. But as soon as I use it on the, on the things I bring in, then we only discuss these things. And with the ear chair, it was a little bit the same. You felt like I wanted to make a space that if no one is there, it's still a landscape. So a forest, you never question, like if there's one person walking in the forest, you never question like, uh, why are there hundreds of trees since there's only one person? What an emptiness, like terrible. But if you put a hundred chairs and there's only one sitting there, it feels uncomfortable because like it feels empty, unused. So this question about landscape and the quality of it, like why don't you have that in a, in a forest, but why do you have it in a canteen? That's the main question. And that you try to solve. And with the ear chair, I wanted to make a landscape. If no one sits there, it's still you feel like you walk into a space. And that's why we develop. And then of course, like how can I make like public space? So you feel a big space, but you can still feel comfortably just talking with one person. That's where the ears came from. And that's like, and we built it. And, and it's like raising this question, because the other thing was also like, if you have to build like a new space in existing situation, like everybody that worked there, they were still like drilling holes in the wall, uh, cutting wood. So it was always dusty and noisy and everything. But us being product designers, I had it uh, produced in another company. So all the, all the dust and all the making was done in a factory. And we came one day before like the deadline and all things were brought in and the space was clean. So all these design come from always like thinking about like, where am I? What do I think of it? And how can I change it in, in, a, be in a better sense? Although you can always question like what's really better. But I feel that that for me is the reason why the ear chair became as it was. And I'm also quite sure if I would have developed it for a company, an industrial company, they would probably say like, mm, I'm not sure this is all like uh, economic clients. I'm not sure if they would feel very comfortable with like this use ears in front of them. They would probably find it a bit childish and they feel that they're not taken seriously being able to sell like all these insurances to people that see them like sitting behind ears. But since we got the project and we could do like a special thing and then it was built and the people start using it and then it worked so well 
that people were not questioning these ears anymore. They knew like it, take, it took away like uh, the view, but you could still sit see if someone is sitting there. It took away the noise. So it worked and because it worked, people started to believe in it. And, and that's where I believe that it's so nice that we develop products, not through the industry, but through projects. And then when they're really well, they become a product. And then you don't have these questions. So this is, I would say, this is a little bit the way of working. And it's the same, like the crate uh, furniture, like we had, we had like a huge uh, workshop like 1800 square meters because we didn't rent it but we were in an anti-squat situation in an industrial area so it was six meters high 1800 square meters sitting there with six people working and since i like move a lot and didn't have my desk i felt like i was always things were always lost so at the night i wanted to like uh, make my place and i thought like okay what do i have and i had the table and the crate and i'd like and i put, combined it and i liked it because I would still feel that I'm in a huge space, but when I watch in my box, then it feels like being in a very intimate, small space. And it also blocks the view to the people that pass me. So they can never pass me and then look me and then my eyes have met and then pff, they're on my table and ask my question, they're gone. But, and it's just a box and it's a table. But this is the thing it happened because being in this very specific situation, being in a huge space where you want intimacy and doing it by living in the specific situation. And from there, like a project starts. So for me, it's always about like raising these questions and being in a specific situation. So it's not like an abstract possibility. It's like what happens if this is the space I live in? How can I make it better? And question, of course, like what are the qualities? I find it stupid when you're in a working society and everybody has a room. Like now, all the rooms can be empty and I'm the only one here, and my space is not getting any bigger. If I work in a huge space where no one is there, I can allow the whole space. So at after eight, if no one is there, I can put on the volume and like listen to the music as hard as I want because no one is there. And, and this is why I could probably live and work uh, nicer at night because then I get more space. Or if I start in the morning, then I have to be more silent. And this, these kind of observations are used within the designs that we make. Like in a modern world, it doesn't mean that reality does not exist, but it's not as harsh on it. Like graffiti in a modern world hardly works on it. So you're more free to make like an imagination how things would work before coming to reality. And, and I gave as an example that if you do on skydiving, then you go to in a plane, you go to 1300 feet, then you jump out of it and then you have free fall. And it's amazing what you can do. Like you can roll over, you can think, but you're not out of reality. There's still like somewhere there is still an earth and there is an end there. But in between, there is like this total liberty of doing things. And it still has its own rules because if I do one arm like this and you're like this, I will turn around. So you still play with reality, but it's not as harsh on you. And that's with the model world also. You, you're allowed to build a world you can believe in without being distracted by every questions of reality immediately. And I think it's important, like when you want to develop that you are able to live like isolated for a while. And, and it's the same, like if you look at, uh, like uh, if you believe in evolution and, and you look at the Galapagos Island and you have like these amazing creatures there that could only develop themselves because they were not asked all the time, like, what do you think you can do with it? Like, is it really better? Like, imagine you would be a giraffe and you would be like the first one that makes his neck like five centimeters longer than your neighbor. And you would ask, well, I'm doing this experiment. What do you think of it? Like, is it clever for me to make it longer? And then you would probably say, well, what can you do more than I can? Not really, and I have to shave a little bit longer every day. So then you feel like, but why would you do it? Like, what does, what's, what does it really make better? But living on an island, stretching it and stretching it, not seeing your neighbors, not getting these awkward questions about reality, you come back and then this neck, it's like three meters long and you can reach places you couldn't reach before. And you look completely different. You walk differently, like you became like very special. And I think, this is exactly why you need like this model world and not model world to be exactly what people expect from you, but a model world where reality 
is pushed away a little and does not exist like every minute. And, and, and that is for me why I like this model world so much because you don't get all the time these nasty questions. They only come when you already reach the level that you knew for sure why you do these things. Well, I think what, what is really nice about the uh, Royal Tegla is that they are, it's like a family business. So when Jan came into the business, like he took it over from his father and he had to make his mark, but also he had to make sure that like the business wouldn't go down in his generation, which I think is a very healthy situation because it puts a lot of pressure, like social pressure on you, but it also makes you that you can never run away from it. And I think, so you're trapped into a situation. And, and I think that's quite good because it brings a kind of a concentration because otherwise you always think like, no, it's somewhere else, like my future or my uh, good things are somewhere else. And, and, and you're never sure if it's, if you make the right decisions, but here there is no decision because it's like, it's par part of your heritage. It's sort of like you have to, and that, and I think it's a, it's a very good uh, uh, energy involved with that. And then the first project he asked to do is, which, which was with a group of four designers, was that he felt mm -hmm. that he wanted to keep like his qualities in Holland. And he felt like if I want to keep my painters, then I have to develop them into like new kind of ornaments. Because if I let them go, it takes like uh, seven years to uh, develop painters at the level that he needs them. So if I would let them go, then that's a lost generation. Then I will never ever have painters anymore. Because like if I want to do a project with painters, it takes me seven years to invest before even doing something. So he felt like I need new work for my painters. So that was the project he started. We made this this miniature uh, surface for it. Was that meant like some like you would only spend a certain amount of time on a, uh, on an ornament and if you are a detail painter you, paint, you could do all details if you would be like the rough one you would do like really rough one but it's always 10 minutes so the dif diversity of the piece would mean the diversity of the quality of your paint so you can develop like this 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 these different things that was our first project when we were asked for the um, tulip, uh, um, how do you call it like uh, well it's the tulip vase like the collection that was a project that he wanted to do like really limited editions and he they had just done uh, a restoration of the one from the Rijksmuseum and he felt like I have now reached the level that I want to celebrate and I could celebrate it through using our knowledge which we developed to make like the copy of the editor uh, to, to restore the old one we will use that to make new things and so we were asked to do that and then Knowing that the tulip, like the, 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 the whole uh, history of the tulip, which was like from Turkey, and there was a moment that these tulips were so extremely expensive that it blew up like the whole shareholders thing. So this whole, like this was like a, a, a money blow up, like, like a crisis that we also got now. So, so you feel that within this tulip, which is just a flower, there's an amazing story. And it's the same a little with the collectors. Like, that's a strange thing as a designer, you can have collectors. They want like things like to be really specific, specific and they want to really uh, pay a price for it. But then it's also important, like when you start with seven, the faster it would go to one, the more richer they would become. So this whole idea of collecting became for us like quite a topic. And also this cabinets of curiosity that you go through the world and collect all these things and then you build your own world. So that was like, I think for me, like a big starting point. And then you had like all these questions about like, okay, what is like an organization? Like when things are organized, we always think when things are organized that like that they are very clear. But then, so if you go to uh, like a proper, um, um, where, you, where you store the dishes at the sink and you would ask people, what do you see? Then they would probably say, I see a very disorganized situation. And I doubt that whether it's disorganized. I think if I would really investigate it, then probably I would know who took off the table. Because then you have people that first do all the plates and then the cups, you have people that take everything. So it is seems to be disorganized, but it's very specific. It's a very specific pile. And I, and I like this kind of thinking that we always think that the quality comes from this organization. And I believe that it's that you have to be more specific on what you organize. So 
that was for me a reason to start thinking about, okay, I don't want to make like a straight power, but I want to make like this other kind of organization. And, and so we developed, and then also because you do that, like it's more easy to fall off. And when it falls off, we would have less than seven pieces. So it gets like more, it gets more, uh, more expensive. So it's like this whole playing with the collective and the non-collective. And then since for us, it was also a high point, we celebrated like on every bucket, we celebrated a group. So we used everybody that worked for us that was painted on the small vases that we also used as legs. Then there was like uh, one bucket where we had all the silhouettes of the people that worked at um, uh, Markham that made our piece. So we organized all these stories together and at the end we had this pile of buckets. And there were buckets because in Holland if you buy, if you buy flowers at a store then most of them they are stored in buckets. So the bucket is sort of like the new vase. So, and then on every bucket I can tell like a whole story about like the artists that I fancy, like that are really my idols, that I believe they are the best things. That one, so one bucket was addressed only on the people that I was like, uh, that I highly uh, um, feel very highly for their work. So, so in that sense, like all, it was kind of like a small library of all the knowledge that I possessed at that time. And to celebrate it, we made this cabinet which is an ordinary ceramic uh, ca cabinet. We have like these cabinets, we call it like a cast, um, where we have this, the ceramics on top of it. It's like a very Dutch kind of uh, uh, antique uh, cabinet. And on the other hand, we had like, when you would take it all out, it would be this uh, pile. And, 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 and as the dish, uh, the, the, the collection of dishes are when, when, you, do the, uh, when you do the dishes. So there, this is also thing. It's like there are thousand stories in it, but at the end, it's just it's just a pile of vases, and you can like them or dislike them. And they had to do like uh, all the paintings and get it at a higher level. The way they had to glue everything together. So at the end, it was also like a masterpiece, so difficult to make, so uh, specific. So that was like I would say the enjoyment for the company, and for me, the enjoyment was that. At that moment, like everything that was important in my brain, I could celebrate through making this uh, pile of vases. Uh, it's like it's like it's a bit it's difficult eh, to say like from your own point of view, like what is Dutch design and where it's headed for because like it's like being in the middle of the forest like you just see trees and like I have no idea how it's connected to the outside world and I and it's not my job my job is to design so and I feel that uh, for curators and art historians they they must think about like how does it like how does it fit in a certain culture and all these things we just have to do things and of course it fits like in a sense like when when you are born and you have a certain language you have a certain culture of doing things so definitely there is something like Dutch design but if you want to really express what it is like for me it's not that interesting because it's not my way where I if I know better what is Dutch design it doesn't make me better it just makes me better to think about like where do I stand in design and what do I find interesting and like the the Dutch design you just you just described is for me it's like uh, it's really like the 90s and and, and, and and of course like at the beginning of 2000 but this very historical driven design that it was about against mass mass production making it like uh, handmade and 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 celebrating this whole idea of craftsmanship and at that time, I probably was like the right thing to do. And that's why there are so many references to historical things. And it's, a, it's an easy way because you can look at your historical things and then build them back. What I like, for instance, now if I'm in China, is that you feel so much the progress, like what, which we had in the 50s. In the 50s, it was all about future. It was about like the new world, the new promise. Things would be like completely different. They were not thinking about like how did we do things and restore these things. No, it was like straight going for like the new thing, and I, and I envy that on a way that in the sense that I find that that is like so interesting to be like completely uh, freed from from history and that you're allowed to think really ahead, which I think is interesting, and that's for me what I think at the moment like industrial design becomes very important again because. At, when I studied, you had like this self-made 
um, uh, designers that had their own production system and they made tables and chairs like in a craftsmanship way they had their own atelier and then they developed things and made them there that was like the self-production of the designer now you feel that the new design is much more looking at like how industry makes they're more interested in the machines in the industrial kind of thinking so now you see a lot of designers making small machines which have which means that the whole industrial design may grow into like a much smaller scale situation which means that the factories can become smaller they can go back into the city and you can have like products made on demand but still industrially made so so i think that at that that at least for myself that's very interesting this whole idea of how industry is going to change and what kind of effect it will have on the city in the way to deal with things being made like like if you look at shoe makers and key makers then you as a customer you go to the place and then you speak with the person that actually does does it if i buy a vacuum cleaner like the distance between like where i buy it and where it's made it's so far away that no questions can be raised and answered post properly you get like these help desk and then you call the help desk and then they tell you like maybe you can you can find it all on the internet so it's like it's not a help desk it's just like a bubble of air in between that delays you as a customer and i feel that with this industrial thinking that 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 may grow now which is maybe more like an indian way there there you also still have that people still work within the city they have like small workshops in the middle of the center where they also live so it's not about just leisure and the park and the free no it's like how you work so you can pass by a workshop and when the workshop would meet need someone then you can then they can ask you can you can you fill in an hour and you could so i think it will make a big change in like how society will deal with it and how the city will change and that is what at the moment i find very interesting but but the nice thing is for for the the, the professional designer is that the, the, the whole discipline has grown so incredibly fast that i feel now it's more like athletics so you can do like 100 meters uh, fast you can do like jump as high as possible as far as possible do a marathon but they're all their own discipline and they all go under design but you can really focus and you can't do everything really well you do like one and maybe one other that's really next to it and then maybe one other but not like you're a designer and you're multidisciplined and you can do everything i don't believe in that at all i think that the, the whole profession is stretched so big that there are many possibilities to focus more on now I, i'm not sure like i do know like that's of course with these questions all it deals with the context that is asked and like this industrial design at that time for sure then my idea with it was also that it was really about like uh, design comes from advertisement and therefore like most of the industrial design is really like this economically driven and to and and uh, and and for sale is then like a very important uh, part now now i would now I would probably give like almost the opposite answer to it because like times have changed and we have developed this like uh, limited editions really far we stretched it enormously we have been uh, this whole idea of uh, um, craftsmanship we have developed in the meantime. And I think now it's time to discuss again, like what is industrial design? And, and that for me, industrial design is not just the product that comes out of it and goes in the shop, but for me, it's more like the working society where we started with that, like how things are made, how the, um, the factory would look like, how you would drive to the factory, how you would stay over at the factory so now it stretches for me and then the, the nice thing of industrial design is that it's so, so much about the numbers of something so you can make like a big difference because so many of them are made if you think about like a car like if you take all the components how many they are and how beautifully made they are then the price like you can buy a new car for eight thousand euros and then you have like all these pieces made very precisely and even being like painted, like amazing how they are made. And, and it's so incredibly uh, inexpensive and cheap. And, and so you could say that one thing of industrial, uh, the industrial design is that it becomes affordable for everybody. But I think that that's not the goal to have everything affordable for everybody because not everybody wants to have these things. I'm quite sure that if I would make many of my designs, 
most people didn't even want them. Like it, it's even stupid to make millions or thousands of them because there's not even thousands of people that will really cherish them and want them. So then it's probably better just to make five because when they are made, you can start doing something else. So it, it really depends a little bit like on the context. And, and, and this whole idea of what we discuss now, this whole popularity that starts economically, but also in politics, that it should be understandable for everybody. But imagine that if scientists like, physici like, uh, like uh, physics, that they should not are allowed to use their um, the formula and you had to prescribe everything it will delay so much the knowledge so it is important that if you want to develop for a bigger group that you also have your own uh, a secret language that you only understand because that's like a very short language that can do a lot in a little bit of time so i think it's important that there is a balance between things that are really made by industry and for loads of people and that are done for like limited situations. Because imagine that like uh, the roads and the cars, they're all made for like this thousands of people. And that's why this, this infrastructure is able to be built. If it would have been a limited thing, then we wouldn't have roads. We wouldn't have like um, petrol stations. There's so much that wouldn't exist for that. And, and, I, and, and that's what I find interesting on industrial design. Well, well, I feel that design is like where I'm trained for, it's like designing makeup tools to uh, be able to do things. And, and for me, the reason that they are tools, it's like that makes it like easy for me. So if I want to sit and I know that I can design like an artificial thing, you can sit on and that's then a chair and that's then a designed thing. And I like it this way because at least it's clear what I do. And then I can think about like, okay, but what do I want with sitting? Like, how do I want people to sit? That I will address to it like one way, like an ear chair and another way when I did for Druk, when I did the, the lock, you could sit on is that you address that like, okay, in a place as a forest, yes, I can make a chair that's like completely artificial and made for like in a, in a, like in a company and then bring it there. But like there's all these things already there you can sit on. But somehow people don't address to it like sitting some of them will but most of them won't and then i need it like i need it to have like an extra tool to address on it so i only need one bag to have like five meters of sitting so that's where i develop that piece because the context of the situation but i had to design this like word to express that you could sit on all the things and, and I still believe for me that's that's where, where where I am a designer I design tools and then after that I start thinking like but like wh what do I take as my responsibility like what do I find important and and that makes then like uh, well all the different things we did